Right, guys, just getting you set up here for exercise two in case you need it. Pretty straightforward. This can be pretty short, but just to recap, we're going to be doing two layouts uh, with six by six squares or six by six page size essentially. And in each square, you're going to have a word pair. So, for example, whether it's open, close, or plus, minus, yes, no, inside, outside, whatever. What we're trying to do is convey meaning within each layout, meaning that connects to the relationship of these words, which as you can see, tend to be opposites, okay? So you can play on the opposites and then, you know, emphasize the fact that they are opposites. You can, uh, you can also uh, work with ways in which we may, may think of them more, uh, as more similar uh, than we realize or may consider right off the bat. So how you interpret it and what you do with it is up to you. We are essentially just taking type here and using Futura Bold, which is our only typeface option. Uh, we're using Futura Bold only. It can be, you know, all lowercase, all uppercase, upper lowercase, a mix. Uh, we can scale it to any size we want. We can vary the size of all the different characters. We can repeat characters. We can uh, overlap and create texture and, um, you know, so while we have tight constraints, the actual, uh, you know, options for what we can do are, are pretty, uh, pretty broad, okay? And really we're only limited to how we think about this. So what I would suggest before you even jump into the computer is to sit down and, you know, write uh, each word down. So let's say I'm doing inside, outside. I'm gonna write down a list of words that connects to inside. I'm just gonna exhaust, just empty my brain on the page. Anything that, that relates to inside and I'm going, to do, I'm going to do the same thing for outside. And then I'm going to try to draw conclusions, you know, or draw connections between my two lists. I might do word, uh, you know, mind maps and things where I start to, um, you know, start as uh, maybe the word inside is in the center of a circle. And then I just start to branch it out like a tree with all these branches and connect multiple words together uh, and see where it takes me. These little process exercises that help you get to interesting ideas versus the obvious things. Um, you can imagine that I've seen, you know, hundreds of these and you get a range oftentimes from, you know, very expected and totally obvious to really interesting and, and completely, um, you know, unexpected, which is cool. When we can do that, we're, we're, we're doing well. Um, you can play with the materials as well, you know, so um, you, like I said, for texture, um, we were talking about, okay, what, what does that mean? I mean, I can literally print a word out you know, rub it on the cement, get some raw texture to it, scan it back in and, and have an interesting uh, visual happening. So you, you, can, you can play with those things. You can cut, you can slice things, um, you know, you can slice pieces of words apart. You can do whatever you want to do, okay? So aside from all that, let's just talk about uh, setting this up. You can do it in whatever program you want. I, I'd say Illustrator is probably easy just because it's not a long document. We don't have a lot of text. We essentially have two words per layout, unless we're going to do, um, um, you know, overlaps and repetitions and things. But even then, it's just easier to do that in Illustrator, okay? And at the end of the day, when this is due, you're going to bring in two trimmed out six by six squares. So you're not going to have, um, you know, an eight and a half by 11 with a square on it. You're going to actually trim out the, uh, the, the layout, okay? So on that note, there are a couple different ways you can set this up, okay? One simple way somebody might do is to, I'm an Illustrator here. Uh, they might go new, and they might just use a, a letter layout, okay? Um, maybe, they, you know, the number of artboards you, you have is up to you. Maybe you want to have two, maybe you want to have more so you can do different layouts. Um, you can have one artboard and use multiple layers, it's your call. Um, in this case, maybe just, I, I would do two artboards, okay, to start. Um, then I would have my 8.5 by 11 page. And if I go to my rectangle tool and click on it, uh, I can, the easiest way to draw in exactly six by six squares is to, with my tool selected, to just click on the page. You'll see this little dialog box here. And then I'm just gonna enter six by six and hit okay. All right, so now I know I have a six by six square, okay? As a fill right now, which I don't need, so I'll take the fill off using this. I'll keep the stroke, oh, sorry. I'll keep the stroke on there. Okay, it's a little heavy right now. The stroke, it's uh, you can you know do that you know maybe half a point or even even less. Okay, because ultimately what would be happening is you'd be trimming this out anyway. You're not going to see the stroke ideally. Um, so some people might want to have that on a, on an eight and a half by eleven page. 
Um, maybe they lock that down so it doesn't, you know, get selected when they're putting stuff in here. And then they'll start to do their layout in here, okay? Um, that's one way to do it. And then when you, when you print it out on 8.5 by 11, you just trim out at these, uh, at the strokes here, okay? Uh, another way to do it, which is probably how I would recommend doing it, it's your call. I would I created a six by six document already, so you could just go in here and create a six by six, maybe with a couple artboards. Um, if you scroll down here and go to more settings, you have some say as to how much space is between your artboards. I want a little more space than you know just over a quarter inch. I'm going to do you know at least an inch apart, just so I could maybe even two, so I can see them uh, on their own. And then I would go to create document. Okay, so now I have my squares all ready to go, and it's just easier for me to do my layouts visually on here. Um, so this is probably how I would consider doing it, okay? Um, if you, let's say you're gonna do plus minus, you would just select your type tool, and you would put, you know, just click on the page, and then you could do plus, you know, make a little space here, and then minus, okay? And then remember, whatever you wanna, uh, deselect, you have to deselect to be able to click on to, cl to click back on things. Um, now with that selected, I'm just going to here. I'd go to Futura, and I'm going to go to Bold here. Okay, so this is at least the, the start of um, you know some options for me. I might copy this by holding Option and dragging, and maybe I want to do one here that's uh, upper lowercase. If I go to a quick way to do this is just to go to Type. And then change or change case and go uppercase. Okay, so now I have oh, sorry. Now I have a couple options there. Um, I mean, you could drag it again, and not that you need to do this, but you could go to type again and go to change case and go to title case. Okay, so you have a few different options. Doesn't matter. However, you want to do it. The only reason I'm going to repeat those is because at, at some point I'm going to want to um, make these into outlines. Uh, if I do that, if I go to type, create outlines, okay, what that allows me to do is to, by when I, when I, they're going to automatically come out grouped when you turn them into outlines. So if I go to object, ungroup, now I can select each of these things individually, okay, and I can play around with them in different ways. You know, if I wanted to, you know, move, move things around or I wanted to, you know, play with, um, how I'm setting these up. I'm just riffing right now, but um, You know you have you have just some more room to move them around what you want to do is you know Consider unless you unless you really want it to be off the baseline and you, you just want it to be kind of all over the place um, If you are going to have them try to be somewhat aligned, you know, you can keep them keep the baseline um, Intact by not not shifting them up and down but if that's part of what your idea revolves around, then you know, have at it and do whatever you want. Um, you can, you know, again, click and drag here, holding Option. You can um, you know, multiply these things. You can, you know, I don't know. I, this, I don't, I'm not doing anything in particular here, but you could create pattern if you wanted to. See, I almost, I, I missed some spots. I missed some over here. I didn't, I didn't select them all. Or no, I selected extras. So just be careful. You know, holding shift here and then selecting allows you to select multiple things here, you know, and move it around to your heart's content, okay? Um, you, can, you can see where pretty soon you could, you know, play with overlap and, you know, who knows what you're going to do, okay? Um, so this is just a quick one here, a uh, very simple layout, and you can see these are essentially... Um, all in, in outlines and it's allowed me to to kind of play with at least you know a basic idea here of you know the minus and plus um, you know it, the nice thing is when you look at these two words before you jump onto the computer if you really examine them you can start to see like oh even you know I didn't really think about it but these two words share that the end you know the last two letters are exactly the same um, so there's an idea there maybe and not that this is an earth-shattering idea by any means, but it's a fun sense of motion, you know, by minus, by these things dropping away from minus and, you know, falling down into plus, there's a little bit of an idea there at least, okay? Um, so let's say I would move on from that one and I would go then to, you know, work on my new layout, okay? Um, 
you, that's you know what you do again and how you treat them is up to you. These this is very minimal and pretty you know pretty basic, but um, you know I don't mind it. I, there's, there's there's it's a fun one. It has a sense of motion and there's a relationship there, and the the you know the the connection is obviously taking away from one and adding to another. But I like how they play off each other. Okay, so let's say I want to then print this. Let's say I have both my layouts. Okay, an easy way to do this. You remember like I don't have a square uh, a, a frame around this. So how am I going to know what to trim it to? So the, what you can do is when you go to print, which is just file, print, or command P, what you always want to do is make sure that your printer is selected, okay? Um, just so the page size and everything works well. Um, and if you were going to print both artboards, you would have all artboards selected. If you only wanted to print one of those, you would print you know, just the range of one here. Um, Media size, it's US letter, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Leaving it defined by driver is fine. Uh, I'm gonna go to marks and bleed, and I'm gonna check on trim marks. And you can see what happened here is some marks showed up. What you can't see in this preview is that there are actual trim marks uh, for the horizontal trim too, okay? So you can see what this is doing is showing me this is the boundary of my page. It's gonna print on an eight and a half by 11 anyway, even though I have it set up as a six by six. As you can see here, the media is eight and a half by 11. My document is six by six. And my trim marks are there. I'm gonna print this. And when I print it out, it's gonna just simply have the, these two words and it's gonna have two trim marks here, two here, two here, two here. There will be no stroke around it. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna use your ruler, line it up, on each section, use your X-Acto knife and trim it out. Super basic. On that note, I'll do a demo in class if you need me to show you how to do that. That's much easier than doing it here. Um, so that should get you started. Uh, remember, depending on where you're printing, if you're printing at school, um, your printer is going to be different. You have to make sure that you print on the, the proper printer. Um, and you know, that's pretty much it. And then you would just simply hit print and you'd be good to go. Okay. Uh, any questions, please sure, be sure to email me sooner than later, uh, and we'll get you going. Thanks.